In this presentation, we can discuss about memory allocations. Following are the three types of memory allocation we can discuss in this presentation: global or static, stack or automatic or local variable, heap or dynamic memory allocation, global and static variables. They are part of the binary. When the binary loads into the memory by the operating system, they also get allocated in the process address space. These are the memory location which are first getting allocated as well as initialized. Lifetime of this particular allocation is till the end of the program or the binary is unloaded. You cannot change the size at runtime. We may not allocate huge amount of memory in global and static variables because it will affect the size of the binary also we don't have much control on the life of this allocation stack variables as we have seen in the previous presentation regarding assembly language stack variables are maintained by the stack pointer so allocation is just decrementing the stack pointer allocation is done on the execution thread stack managed by the stack pointer live is till the stack point decrement which means the return of the function or the variable goes out of the scope inside the function so it's completely maintained by the stack pointer it's a very fast allocation because allocation is nothing but changing a value in the register which is very fast normally the size is set by the compiler at compile time but you can allocate dynamically from stack but normally we don't do the stack is limited so very small amount of memory is normally allocated on stack otherwise it may cause stack overflow dynamic or heap allocation is the third and last which we're going to discuss allocation is done at runtime Allocation is done from heap inside the process. Heap is nothing but a pool of memory, chunks of memory inside the process at the space. Allocation is done by a function call like malloc, calloc, etc. In most cases, if you need a large chunk of memory like 1 MB, 2 MB, 100 MB, 500 MB etc. You need to use this particular method to allocate. So life is controlled by your deallocation. So when you call free, the memory get deallocated. malloc, calloc etc. does a lot of work internally. So it is very slow compared to stack memory allocation. So there is a whole lot of management mechanism going on inside the heap when we allocate through calloc or malloc. But after the allocation, accessing memory doesn't cost anything more than stack or heap. But at the time of the allocation, it is costlier. So let's think about implementing below logic. We have an integer. We are determining the value of the integer at runtime using a scanner function and we wanted to allocate an array according to the value ended by the user so which means that we want to allocate some memory at runtime so in older compilers where dynamic array is not supported this program will give you an error if the user is entering a huge value even in a compiler which supports dynamic arrays like 1 MB or 2 MB you may run into stack overflow. So this is the solution for the problem. So you have to call malloc and pass the amount entered by the user. After that you can use those memory. You can do free after done using it. It's always a good practice to check if malloc has returned a valid pointer. In some cases, we may get out of memory from malloc 
when the memory is not available. So these are the two useful functions which we will see in the demo memcopy and memset. Memcopy will copy the memory from one location to another. Memset will set the memory to a particular value. And we will see a demo on what we have discussed. So here we have a little program up here which doesn't do much other than allocating a very big array as global variable. So we have a global variable here which has pretty big allocation up here. So if I build this binary and if I go to the location of the build I can see that the size of the binary is almost 14 MB. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of this allocation so instead of 3 I'm going to put 1. Still it's a big allocation though. I'm going to do a rebuild going back to the size so if I look the size has reduced up here it's around 5 MB at the moment so if I comment out this particular line and build it again so the size of the array become 29 KB so global allocation is done in the binary so the size of the binary depends on the amount of global variable we have now we're going to look at this allocation with the help of a tool called VM map from sysinternals. Our aim is to figure out where exactly this particular memory is allocated in the process address space. So VM map is a tool to see the process address space of this process. I have started a copy of VM map and I'm going to select our process alloc1.exe. So this is how the output of VM map looks or this is how the processor space looks. So all we are interested is one single counter which is the image and private. So private part of the image. So private part of the image is the memory allocator only for this particular process in the image session. So it's around 15 MB. So in the bottom pane up here you can see how that 15 MB is being used. I'm sorting it with size so here is a big allocation I can see so it's around 14 MB I can see this particular allocation which is on the dot data session in my binary. This is definitely the global variable which I have just allocated so this is where the global variable so precisely this is the starting address of that global variable so to prove that I'm gonna save this address in a notepad debug attach to process alloc1.exe attach so if you look at the value of A, the start address of array A, you can see it is 0x001 A7000, which is the same address we got here. So now I have moved this allocation to here, which is in this stack. I'm going to start debugging to see what is going to happen. So my stack is under overflow, so I got a stack overflow exception. So my stack is completely used, which means that I cannot allocate this much memory in the stack. So stack is not good for this much big memory allocations. Now I'm reducing one zero up here. Let's see if it is going to work. that looks to be working yes that is working so now let's see the program in VM map so I have started VM map I'm selecting the process so now if you look 
you can see the image private is very less it's 448k it was in MBs previously we have commented out the huge global variable so now we are interested in this so the private bytes in the stack so it is 836k that is a huge value this is the value which it can go max which is around 1 MB so this is 836 this is the array which we have seen on the stack so this is that particular thread so this is that particular variable now if we go to Visual Studio and look at that variable we can see that the first five digits is the same so the allocations are always on page boundaries so this B5 for is not a page boundary so the nearest page boundary is 7 triple zero because one page is 4k so that's what we are seeing here so that is the variable up here on the page boundary as an exercise you can try to reduce the amount of this local variable and see the allocation difference in VMAP so VMAP is a freely downloadable tool there's no cost for that and now we will discuss how we can allocate huge amount of memory the methods we have so far discussed is not good for huge amount of allocation due to multiple reasons I have commented out the stack allocation and I have moved a bigger allocation it's around 1 GB to M alloc so if M alloc is successful we will get a valid allocation pointer here let's have a look at the VM map of this process so if you look at you can see that the heap is very high it's around 1 GB it's 1048 MB so the private heap is the highest so this may not make much sense to you at the moment because it is part of the heap internals so there is a single chunk of memory which is single segment which heap manager got from a single virtual alloc to the Windows kernel. So the bottom line is if you want a heavy allocation, huge allocation, we should always go for heap. So the other value stack and image is low. So we are not going to discuss private data and other details. So I have demonstrated uh, memset and memcopy. In this case, what memset is used for is setting the first 500 bytes of this particular allocation to this particular value. So if you look at here, so this is the PTR. So if I can draw PTR here in the memory, it's all 61. All the bytes are 61, which is A. Up to 500 from the starting address, 500 bytes is this particular value so now what I have done is I have two allocations here so PTR1 and PTR I have just copied PTR to PTR1 look at PTR1 I'll get the same output so you can check for the documentation of this functions and play around with it so these are the header files required. So SGD lib is required for malloc. This is required for memset, etc. So we have seen this demo. So that's it. Thank you very much.